I want to manipulate the uh, different K values here or some items here so that I can receive different metrics for different paths. So let's say that from router 2 I want to reach router 5. In topology I can see that there are different paths to get to router 5. So from router 2 I can go direct to router 5 or I can go to router 4 and then 6 and then router 5 or I can choose to go to router 1, then 3, and then to router 5. So which one is more logical? But before doing anything, what I'm going to ask you is to click on that subscribe button. Also, there is a bell button there. If you click on that and activate that, anytime that I post a new video, you are going to receive it as soon as possible. Give me a thumbs up too. That's going to encourage me to create more of these kinds of videos for you. The best path to choose is the blue path because it is a direct path from router 2 to router 5. So let's see what topology shows us in router 2. In router 2, I have IP EIGRP topology. And what I'm going to do is destination. So I'm just typing 5550 slash 24. You can see that it tells me there are two paths to get to that. The first path is 10, 10, 12, 1. And the second path is 10, 10, 24, 4. Which means that from router 1 and router 4. It is a little weird because I have a direct path to router 5. Let's see if router 2 and router 5 are not neighbors. So let's check this. Show IP EIGRP neighbors tells me that I do not have a direct neighborship with router 5. So why? So IP protocol says that 10.10.25.2 is part of EIGRP network. So there must be a problem on the other side. So if I go to router 5 and check here, show IP EIGRP, so IP protocol, uh, it tells me that I haven't put 25 into here. I have 35 as a matter of fact. So let's see. So CDP neighbors tells me that router 2 is a direct uh, connected device and show IP interface brief tells me that Ethernet 02 is 10.10.25.5 but here I haven't added that to EIGRP network so I need to go to configuration and type rather EIGRP1 and what I'm going to do is to add network 10.10.25.5 Zero, 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 zero. and this way I have a new adjacency. Now that I have this, if I go back to router 2, what I see is a different message. So for this, you can see that I only have one successor now, and it goes directly to router 5, and the path is 10.10.25.5. 10, so this is a little different. So what do I have here? The reported distance is 128,000 something. Which means that router 5 says to reach to 5555, this is my distance. I have added extra distance from me to router 5 to this distance and I have uh, reached to this 400,009 something. And this is my final distance. But if I want to get to that from other path then I will have to go through some more calculations. So if I go back here you can see that uh, the previous calculation was something like 460,000. Now what I have is something like 409,000. And the reported distance here it is 128,000 but the reported distance used to be 435,000. This is important. Let's see. 435,000 is reported distance and it is bigger than the distance that I have calculated. My distance to the destination is 409,000. So uh, rather one's distance is 430,000. That is very much bigger than mine and I would say there is a loop if I, you know, uh, choose that path to the destination or that path is very suboptimal and it is not good to use even if there is no loop in that path. So I prefer this one. And because they have higher reported distance than my own distance to this destination, they are not even 
feasible. So I would not see them in the EIGRP database for this one, which is the EIGRP topology actually here. Let's play with the values here. So I know that I have different K values. I have five K values. I have bandwidth, load, delay, reliability. The last one is M, which is MTU. Now MTU is always uh, the same, 1500. That's not going to change. The reliability most of the time is not going to change. So if I show, I show interface, let's say E00, you can see the values for reliability right here. Or if it is a little hard to find, what I need to do is to type include reliability. And here it says reliability is 255 out of 255, which is very good. And the load, you can see the transfer and to re the receive load. Both of them are the lowest. So reliability should be the highest, load should be the lowest. And in my case, I have the optimal values for them. So they are not going to change so much. So reliability is okay, load is okay. This is why you do not see load and reliability and MTU in effect. MTU never changes. Reliability and loads most of the time are okay, so there is no problem. So what you see, as a matter of fact, is bandwidth and delay as the values that are used for uh, calculation. So the K values are going to be like this. So K1, K2, K3, K4, K5. And if I go here and check show IP protocol, you can see that it says K values are like this. K1, which is bandwidth, and K3, which is delay, are effective. You can see one in front of them. And K2, which is load, K4, which is reliability, and K5, which is M2, are not effective. They are zero. So only these two values, K1 and K3, are used for calculation. This means that if I increase the delay, I might receive some other value. So let's go to rather 2. What I'm going to do is to, first of all, uh, see what interface is connected to rather 5. This Ethernet 0, 2. I'm going to increase the delay very much on this interface. So let's go to rather 2 and go to interface Ethernet 0 slash 2. And what I'm going to do is to type delay and I'm going to type a very, very high value, the maximum value. Here it is. Now that I have typed this, if I show IPIGRP topology for 5555, it is matter of fact not this 0 slash 24. Okay, now you can see that I have three paths. The first one goes through other one. It has a reported distance of 435,000 and an overall distance of 460,000. Uh, another path through rather 4, again the same thing. And finally, I have the direct path to rather 5, but you can see that the stance is infinity, which is the highest, more than even highest value. Uh, that's, although the reported distance is very low, my delay is so high. So total delay is this much of microseconds, which is not good. But on the other side, other paths have lower delays and this is why this path now is not preferred over the other path. So let's change it a little bit. So I'm going to type no delay and now that I have done this again this path is going to be preferred but this time I'm going to decrease the bandwidth. So I'm going to change it. It says the bandwidth is 10,000 kilobit per second and I'm going to go with something very low. Let's say 100 kilobits per second. It's very uh, slow path. I'm going to check the topology table one more time. And again, you can see that because the bandwidth is very low, here it says the maximum minimum bandwidth is 100 kilobits per second. Or that's something like 1% uh, of the bandwidth of the other links. This link is not preferable. And now it is, again, with a very high metric level let's say call it metric or whatever it is this is not going to be chosen so changing bandwidth and changing delay is going to change everything so 
if you are asked to doctor the path from the beginning to the end and you want to you know uh, make sure that some specific path is preferred over the other you can use bandwidth and delay as one way to uh, manipulate uh, the path and you know get the result, desired result for your purpose.